Become better at creating data visualizations with one simple rule. Today, I'll discuss the data ink ratio so that you start to create better graphs in the future. I'll also provide you with an example that we will work through together. My students are currently learning about the power of communication and how to effectively communicate with data. They're working through one of my favorite books, uh, this one right here, Storytelling with Data by Cole Nossbaumer Naflick. If I had to pick one takeaway from the book that often comes up with students studying economics and business, it would be the data ink ratio. So let's talk about the data ink ratio. Edward Tuft, a renowned author in the field of data visualization, introduced the concept of the data ink ratio. In essence, this concept promotes chart creators to evaluate whether all elements in a chart are required to communicate the message. The data ink ratio encourages the elimination of non-essential components from a chart. So what do you need? Clear message, having only the necessary elements will make the message clear and easier to consume by your audience. Many of the confusion that you might experience. You'll also save time. Not only will the readers get the message quicker, but you as the creator will save time avoiding confused users and answering unnecessary questions. You will also save space. Data ink optimized charts occupy less space and are easier to resize. Let's talk about two erasing principles. Edward Tuft in his book, The Visual Display of Quantitative Information, states the two erasing principles for a better data ink ratio. First, erase non-data ink. In this category, we have grid lines, colors without meaning, or 3D effects. You can also erase redundant data ink, obviously within reason as well. When we create a chart, sometimes we try to pack more information than necessary, or the software as a default adds extra elements. Check for these additional data information that can be removed. In this category, we have unnecessary legends, labels, excessive information unrelated to the chart's message, and other things that might pop up through your software. So let's check out this example. Here, we have a list of starting salaries by majors for the Hale College of Business at Northern Kentucky University. This is an ugly graph. To make it pretty, we will follow the following steps. Step one, we will remove the background. Step two, we're gonna remove grid lines. Step three, remove gradient fill and replace it with a solid color. Step four, we're going to get rid of the X axis and replace it with data labels at the end of the bars. Step number five, I'm gonna drop the sense. It's an amount of precision that we don't really have in our data but adding the sense makes it seem as if we are precise. Step six, we're gonna change this to a bar chart. It's easier to see. Also, I'm going to sort the majors from highest to lowest. In this next step, I'm going to desaturate the colors. In step eight, I'm going to use color in a way to grab attention. Since I'm an economist, I will highlight economics because that's what I want to discuss in my presentation. Also here, I'll get rid of the borders of the graph. So we went from a really ugly graph to an amazingly pretty graph with an attention grabbing color highlight. What visualizations tips do you like and recommend for my students? Leave a comment. See you next week. Thanks for joining me again for an episode of Economics with Dr. A. My name is Dr. Abdullah Al-Burani. Here's a playlist just for you.